Hi, this is John with Performance Plus Tennis. And in today's lesson, I'm gonna address the number one issue that most recreational players have on their serve that depletes their serve of power and also can be a contributor to injury. Do you have any idea what this is all about? If you guessed the waiter tray, then you are completely correct. So in today's lesson, I'm gonna give you a series of tips and exercises that are gonna help resolve that waiter's tray serve once and for all. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because we have a free gift for you that's gonna help you not only with your serve, but with every shot in the game. What is the waiter's tray position and why is it so common? Well, the waiter's tray position is essentially where the palm is open to the sky and the racket is behind the hand and we're in this position before we advance the racket to the ball. And the reason why this is so common is because when we first start playing tennis, intuitively, it just makes sense to have the strings face the ball so we can make contact very easily. So in the beginning, it allows for easy contact without a complicated movement. But what we don't understand in the beginning is how restricted and how limited that movement is. So that's where that waiter's tray really comes from, having a forehand grip and having the strings face the ball, feeling as though this is how we want to get the ball in the box. This is a bigger picture issue, but I think that the reason why more people play like this is because they decide they want to start playing matches long before they've actually built the skills to play matches correctly. And then they just get trapped in that motion and it becomes a habit that's very, very difficult to break. So the real motion we're looking for is a motion that comes through the full arm, the full range of motion, and it really originates with the grip being a continental. And then when you go into your motion, you're gonna have your elbow behind you, and you're gonna be delivering shoulder power first, and then a full range of motion second. And if you look here on my YouTube channel and some of the other serve videos, we get into the motion in much greater detail, so take a look at those. But that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the ability to create a full range of motion. If I were to do that with a forehand grip, when I get to contact, the strings are actually going to be facing the side, where a continental grip would allow the strings to be facing the ball. So that's a really simple answer as to why we want to use a continental grip and not a forehand grip on the serve, and how we want to avoid that waiter's tray position where the elbow can never get behind you. All it can do is sit in front, and then you just swing from the elbow. And again, very limiting, potential for injury as we try to get power from that source. Um, and we want to really develop a professional quality motion and replace that movement with the right idea. So one of the leading contributors to the waiter's tray motion is the grip. And the grip is confusing for many tennis players. So we're going to try to uh, resolve some of the myths and mysteries about the grip and how it works to allow you to have a professional serve motion. So, but the first thing we want to do is make sure you have a continental grip. So the easiest way to find the continental grip is to hold the racket in your non-dominant hand straight out in front of you and put your playing hand on the top of the handle so your index finger knuckle is on the first bevel to the right of the top. And if you do that correctly, it should be comfortable to create a straight line from the tip of the shoulder to the tip of the racket. And that is what we call a true neutral continental grip. And that's really where you want to be. Now from this position, one of the first drills you can do is just simply have a ball in hand and you can just turn the racket over because we need to get the action of the ball, the racket coming to the ball on edge and then turning as it comes in. So if you just turn it over and get the feel of bouncing the ball with the continental grip, it's gonna help you quite a bit. Now, when you do this, it's gonna feel a little bit awkward, especially if you try to do it with the racket directly in front of you. So you'll notice it's comfortable when the racket is inside the hand. And that is also a similar position that you're gonna be when you serve. So we'll get into that a little bit later. But this, just a simple exercise is really gonna help you, okay? Another one you can do is you can place the ball down on the ground. And I have all my players learn how to do this. And I've got a continental grip and I'm gonna go down to the ball with the edge of the racket. And as I get to the edge, right to the ball, I'm gonna turn the strings inside and I'm gonna pick the ball up. And I'm gonna learn how to do that with my continental grip. So that can be a little tricky. But the skill or the movement you're trying to learn here is that the racket is gonna rotate because the shoulder's moving. 
So I'm not really manipulating the racket with my hand as much as I'm rotating outwardly from the shoulder to bring the racket to the ball. See that? Measure, pick it up. And as you get more and more comfortable with it, it'd be great if you just picked up every ball for the rest of your tennis life using that professional skill that you see high quality, high performance players use. So those are two excellent drills to help you start to get the feel of how that grip works and puts the strings on the ball. Another simple exercise that'll help improve your feel of the grip and also give you the feel of slicing the ball is just, you've got the ball and the racket in hand, just, just bounce the ball to the racket and then slice the ball back to the hand. So I'm actually cutting the side of the ball as I'm playing it, I'm actually cutting the side of it like a slice and that is sending the ball back to my hand. So just a fun little thing to do. I've got a nice soft hand on the racket. I can feel the weight of the racket head the whole time. Got my continental grip and I'm just playing catch here, basically just touching it back by hitting the side of the ball. And that gives you the feel of slicing, which is gonna naturally occur when we get into the motion with this grip. So now we wanna take these series of drills and try to implement them into our actual serving motion. And you know, one of the biggest challenges that tennis players face is that we're trying to unravel or replace bad habits with good ones. And of course we trust those bad habits that we've developed, particularly in the Raiders tray and the serve motion, and, and we don't trust the new ones. So the only way you can really do this is through a lot of practice, a lot of repetition, doing the right things. And I'm really a big proponent of rehearsing. And that means that you're actually practicing without the ball. Just like a dancer would be practicing and rehearsing without the music. So I want you to take the ball out of play. You can have the ball in your hand. You can do all the things you want to do here, but you're not going to place the ball up. And then you're going to feel as though you just keep rehearsing, coming through with the racket on edge. Okay. And keep it on edge as long as you can. And as you do this, go slow, go slow, turn it in, turn it over and bring it through and keep re repeating that movement until you start to feel how the rotation of the racket moves into the ball as you go into contact. And here's what really, here's where it becomes challenging. Once you've done that, let's say you've done that several hundred times over a couple of days and you're starting to really get the feel, when you get out and you put the ball in hand and place the ball up to play it, you just have to not worry about where the ball goes. So what the prevailing thing that occurs is that we are concerned about where the ball goes and we revert back to the habit that we've created. But in the beginning, you're not gonna be able to control where the ball goes. So don't even worry about that. Just attack the ball on edge and stay on edge as long as you can. And instinctively, you'll start to turn that racket into the ball and start to gain control and accuracy. But in the beginning, you're just gonna be slicing the ball pretty far off the side. And for a right-hander, it's gonna be pretty far off to the left of where your intended target is. Be willing to let that happen. I think this is where the fork in the road is. I've worked with a lot of adults over the years, and this is the fork in the road where they're either gonna say, hey, I'm gonna to commit to missing and getting the feel right and building this motion, or I'm gonna stick with what I trust and just keep pushing the ball in the box. So this is a big point in time for you to really make the choice to work on this and replace that old habit with a new one. One key element that you can really focus on as you're working on this new motion is what the palm of your hand is doing. So for me, what I'd like to feel is that the palm of my hand stays down to the ground as long as possible, all the way into the swing. So do my movement, and as I'm coming in, it's palm down, palm down, palm down, palm down, swing. And I don't let that palm rotate backwards or open up. And if you can prevent that from happening and keep your elbow back, you're gonna be in a position where you can allow this natural swing to develop. And that's really gonna help build the movement. And once again, do that without any concern about where the ball goes. There's no judgment about where the ball is going at this point in time. We're just simply, we're trying to replace this waiter's tray position with a real motion. And the other thing you can do, which will really help, is to film yourself. Get out there and film it and look at it and keep working on it. And you know, the beautiful thing about this is you don't even have to go to a tennis court to practice this. You can practice in your backyard, you can practice on a patio, you can even practice on a high ceiling in your home. So you can really work the kinks out of this, replace the old habit with a new one by doing these drills and these steps and being diligent about it. And if you are practicing on the court, 
you do not have to be on the baseline. In fact, I discourage you from being on the baseline in the traditional area we'd be serving from because that sort of dovetails you into wanting to get the ball into the box. So you can move around the court. You can be anywhere. You can be in the middle of the court because once you're here, you're not really serving to get the ball in the box anyway. You're just playing the ball and working on your skills. And I've also found oftentimes when I have players turn around and face the back fence and hit serves, they actually play the serve better technically than when they're actually serving in a point or trying to put the ball in the box. So you can be on the baseline, you can turn your back and hit to the back fence. You can be where I am and you can place the ball up and you can hit it into the side fence. You can do all kinds of things. But the idea here is to avoid the idea that you need to get your ball into the service box because that's really going to prevent the growth that we're looking for as we attempt to replace that weight as tray movement. I hope you really enjoyed this lesson today and you can take these concepts and really build a professional quality of movement and get rid of that weightage tray motion once and for all. Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you've not done so already. Give us a like and feel free to leave your comments below as you work on your motion and you want some ideas or give me feedback on the drills. Let me know if they're, how they've helped you along with any other ideas or questions you may have. And don't forget to click the link in the description below and gain access to our library of fundamentals, not only in the serve, but on every shot in the game. And if you'd like more information on how to build a professional quality serve, my world-renowned Serve Foundation course is available on the website and has helped hundreds and hundreds of players like you develop a professional quality serve. We also have a membership program and other popular courses that can help you build your game. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Oh, 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 oh,